burn. I think that's gonna be able to do what I want it to do. Only one way to find out. Let's see. Well, welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper and I am buckling down so hard to try to remain diligent in this and also to stay focused. The deal is I could be using this smokehouse right now to hot smoke things. Now the cold smoker is not hooked up yet, but that doesn't mean I couldn't use the hot smoker, but here's the deal. I know me well enough to know that if I start cooking on the hot smoker, uh, it's going to take me longer to finish everything because I'm going to be using it. I'm going to be getting that return on my investment. I'm going to be getting that reward. And I'm not going to stay focused on completing it the same way that if I uh, wait till it's pretty much done. Until I say, okay, everything that I really want taken care of on here is done. And then, <clears throat> you know, start cooking on it at that point. Last night I went out to the lake to go shoot. Uh, carp again, bow fishing. I want to smoke a bunch of carp fillets in here. I think it'll be just like smoked salmon. I'll just have to pull the Y bones out first and I think it'll be awesome. I got a buddy who uh, I think he used to live up in Alaska for a bit. Yeah, I think he at least visited, but he wants some like candied salmon substitute, you know, some candied carp. I think we can do that probably. I've got so many other things. I look at my ducks right now and I want to cull the males. I want to take out the extra males I have, put them in here and eat them. I'm looking at our meat chickens that are growing and I want to eat them. I'm getting so excited about this. And it's really hard to not just fire this thing up and start cooking on it. This fall or winter, I even want to do a whole deer in here. I might not even quarter it. I might just hang a whole deer in here. But right now, the part I'm focusing on, got a couple last things to do on this to make it where it needs to be. The part I'm focusing on right now is the internal racking system. Now on this hot smoker and cold smoker, okay, speaking kind of more for the hot smoker right now because when I hot smoke, the fire is going to be right here. If something's this high above it, it'll probably be fine. If something's this high above it, it'll probably get burned. But when I'm cold smoking, you know, I've got all sorts of different heights I can hang it at too. And what I want to do is create a very complex, very diverse, um, a lot of options, racking system. What I decided to do was to run to town, I was in town already, and pick up some rebar. I picked up some half inch to begin with. I may pick up some other stuff moving forward too. 
um, maybe some five eighths if I feel like I need it. But if I take a 20 foot stick of rebar, which half inch right now, about 10 bucks, I can take that and cut it down into almost five foot sections. I got just a little shy of five feet here and I can get four out of one stick. So right now this is costing me $2.50. Um, I have a number of projects coming up that I plan on using rebar for, so I picked up 10 sticks. If I cut them all into four pieces, I'm not going to need 40 different hangers in here. Um, this is pretty tough, and I've got some different ways to hang individual things off here. If I've got fillets of carp, I could hang, you know, maybe six, seven of them off of here. If I've got uh, something else, drumsticks, sometimes I'll hang like a whole ram shank. Um, I could hang a number of those off of here and if I want to use a grill plate to put something bigger on like a whole bird or a uh, like a whole turkey maybe um, or even quarter turkeys can get pretty big like a brisket like something else I'll run multiple of these next to each other and lay the grill across it and that'll support the weight so my idea I started it last night about dark but is to take some of these boards and these are also going to be brought straight down into it, so it'll be like a U-shape. I just started drilling the holes through it right now. But it's to take some of these and put these inside my smokehouse. You can see the main framing boards on the outside. These actually rest on there right now, but for added safety and function. On the inside of these cedars, I want to put the other boards. So they're going to run about five feet across from there to there. And they're going to be on the inside of here. And these are going to rest inside them, so you'll have eh, two to three inches sticking past on each side. And I want to make at different levels all the way up, well, starting maybe about there, all the way up them. And they're going to run level across to its pair, its mate. Now this particular one starts a foot in, and then it goes over every six inches, so you got a foot, 18, 24, 30, 36. That's how this is going to be spaced. The next one is probably going to come in 15 inches. And then move up 6 inches from there to 21, and then 27, and then 34, or however it's going to be. Something like that. Um, no, that doesn't work right. 15, 21, 27, 33 that's that's how it's gonna be and if I have this at one level and then say down about here On the wall. I have the other one then that'll allow things to hang here and hang here And it'll be a staggered effect which will give me a lot of options And you can kind of see how these are hanging here now. So imagine if these are hanging here six inches apart and then right above it. There's one of these well, that's going to work out pretty well because that one will dangle down in between them. And say I've got carp fillets. I can have a, a row of them here and then I can have a row of them here. And, you know, if I'm cold smoking something like that or, or salamis I make or, or sausages or something like that, boom, I could have a whole bunch of them hanging in there. Like I said, I'm not going to need 40 of those different sticks, okay? But if I'm able to do 20 birds, you know, whole meat birds, I've got no problem with that. Say if I'm going to take a whole meat bird and I'm going to save it for cooking. Normally, if we're not canning it, you know, for saving a whole bird for cooking, I'll take a bunch of the raw birds and I'll freeze them. And then later we'll pull them out and we'll put them in the oven or throw them on something like this and then cook them later. Well, if my purpose is to have a whole bird, why not fire this up and hot smoke like 20 of them and then freeze those when they cool down? And if I do that, then all I got to do is take it out of the freezer, thaw it, and warm it up. It's already cooked and it's already flavored. I can only imagine pulling one of those out of my oven and being like, oh, you know, I open the oven and it smells like a smokehouse in there because it was cooked in here with some hickory or something. And then same thing like if I've got, uh, if I go shoot 40 carp, it's not unheard of. Remember one night we went out and shot 43. But I've got big thick fillets, nice size fillets, and if I shoot 40 of them, then I got 80. 80 fillets. Good size fillets. You go buy a salmon fillet that same size, you're dealing with like 20 bucks for some smoked salmon. So, boom. Put 80 fillets in here and smoke them up at once. I could do that, potentially. 
And that's the type of racking system I'm going to put in place. So I'll show you a little bit about uh, what I do. Cutting rebar into four pieces, taking these and, and uh, drilling the holes in them, then making the notches so the hole becomes a U, and then screwing them up level. That's the basic idea. We'll see how it works. This is the basic idea. Because there's a pole here and it's the edge of the building, we'll bring it in a ways and start hanging them across. Make it kind of easy. To make this one a partner, I'm actually just gonna lay it on top and trace. The thing I'm gonna do first is just hit it with a sander, kind of clean up some of these things first, but that's the basic design. They'll rest into that groove. They'll hang past two to three inches and uh, this will support them. So I learned a couple things working on this so far. Number one is if I do take one of these and trace it on the other one and make sure they're lined up very well. I was cutting on here for a bit and then collecting the sawdust, but what I realized is if I flip my bucket upside down, it'll catch the sawdust for me. Sawdust is a good uh, smoking thing for uh, smokers, so it makes a lot of smoke. It smolders well, and you're going to want a fruit or a nut tree. Oak is a nut tree, so that's going to be just fine for smoking. Um, I've made up three of these so far, and I think I'm gonna have, which is one and a half sets, I think I'm gonna have four or five sets. And then I might just make a rebar for every single one of them, just so if I ever need them, they already exist. Here's an example of this, and then when I lay them over, I just trace them and make little circles there. Now you can barely see that one right up on my finger there, right up there, right up there, so that way I can just, you know, have them all match up. And then I just sand them off a little bit, that's gonna prevent slivers, um, make them a little smoother. Over time, they're gonna get worn because it would be sliding rebar across them. That's gonna help smooth them out, but I'm just gonna drill this one out quick. Oh, that's one thing too. Last night after dark, Monster Truck here was helping me drill holes through, and this was, I guess it was probably an inch, an inch spade bit type thing. But uh, how long was it taking us? Like two minutes. It would take us like two minutes on a hole. And we were like, man, something's wrong here. So what I actually did this morning is I hit this with the angle grinder. I don't know if you can see that sharp, shiny edge there. I hit it with the angle grinder and it's almost like a new tool. Um, now, 
Let's show them once I'll drop that down. You wanna help me hold that? Watch how quick this is now compared to, like we said, like two minutes yesterday. One of the guys I periodically work with, I've seen him sharpen all sorts of stuff with just an angle grinder, drill bits, all sorts of stuff. Now I've got that, and I'll just have to hit it with the jigsaw, cut that U out, and sand it a little bit. So I'm gonna make a pile more of these real quick, and uh, then I'll install them and see how they look. Just like that, the fourth board is done. I now have two sets of these. I need at least two other ones. And these are all like the 12, 18, 24, you know, 30, 36 guys. So I'm gonna start needing the 15, 21, 27, 33 guys uh, spaced out to stagger them. I'm gonna make a pile of those and then we'll do the install. I'm optimistic about this. I think this is gonna work awesome. And I'm not really thinking I'm missing much on this, as long as my rebar is tough enough. But I also made these bigger, that if I've got to switch to 5 eighths, that's fine. And I can always cut those 5 footers into other things and use them as stakes um, and some concrete pours and other things. So nothing's wasted, we'll find a use for it. Um, I'm just hoping it's capable of doing what I want, and if not, we'll adjust and find another use for it. Everything has a purpose. For the stagger steps, what I did, as I laid down one of my five footers here, essentially five footers are just shy, leveled the edges, you know, brought them even, marked it. And then when I lay this here, I just marked right in between each one. That way we have a stagger all the way down and things won't line up. And then I got kind of excited and decided to screw up the first one. So we've got that one on the left side that one on the right side and they're level from end to end and they're level all the way across and i was going to see if mama pepper would do the honors of putting some of these bars up just start in the back and work your way forward I'll look, yeah both sides over and then slide it down mm, it's a little bit long there you go now you figured it out yeah, you don't want to go too high. Just bring it at an angle. Yeah, there you go. So let's shove your one end past over, right over the top. And then your other one in. There you go. So this is going to work really well, I'm thinking. And uh, Pinky, go grab me one of the grates off the old hot smoker. Um, I don't know if that, there might be one behind it, otherwise sneak that round one out on top. Okay, darling, step back for a minute. Thank you. And then like, here's one grate. It's not the, uh, you know, the most whatever. But the goal is that would sit there, you know. Or if I got them spaced out like up here, you know, set that across a couple of these. That'll support a lot of weight and I can kind of put those however if I've got a bunch of chicken thighs and drumsticks and I was down here cooking them and they got up to temp and they were all good and they were at like this level and then I just want extra smoke penetrating them. I'll move them up here, slide them off to the side and just let them smoke, smoke, smoke. So because of the distance of this stuff um, and the way things are, the best way to put these in is just to lay them down like this at level and then move them into position because I've got this stuff on the edges where it's got to fit under here and then same thing on the other side. So if I bring it up and I turn it at an angle, 
and then I just kind of run it across the top of there. Oh, that one's got that guy. I'm gonna do it the other way. I screwed a couple battens on the inside over here. There you go. So now, whoa! Can't have that fitting backwards. We got the whole top row in. And I had to change up the way I was doing it because these battens stick out an extra inch into the inside of here. So I had to get that side in first and then go across. But look at that, guys. Can you imagine just having like whole fish hanging off of all of these and just smoke rolling in? And uh, I got a pretty special plan. See that where I can see straight through because there's a crack? There's actually a crack next to it too if you can see that hole. I've got a plan for that stuff that I think is going to work awesome and allow me to put something to use that I've been saving for a while. So now I'm going to install the next level down with the stagger. And this will just allow me at any level to do things. I may not need rebars for every single position, um, but I've got a good amount already and I'm probably going to make a few more. I'd rather have, you know, extra here when I'm cooking than run into needing more and having to go buy rebar and cut them with the angle grinder and everything else. So I like it so far. Darling, can you picture it now? Can you picture like those hooks <clears throat> hanging from there? We should have somebody get those hooks. I'm gonna get something to show you guys. I bought these a while ago in preparation for something like this. Um, but I just didn't know I was gonna do it so quickly. Now I'm excited. Let me go get this for you guys. You're gonna like it. I hope. So here's what I wanted to show you. I got these S hooks. See that? And this side's actually a spike. So you can put it through some meat and that side's just regular. And I may close them in a bit. But the goal is that I'll be able to take something like this. And like for instance, say I'm smoking some like whole chubs or something. I'll just shove that right through their eyes and just hang them on there. Or say I've got a, a carp fillet, maybe I'll try hanging them vertical like that and just letting them smoke. And then I can sit there and put as many up there as I want and I can adjust them and you know slide them back and forth and then think about that hanging down and then think about it in a stagger system, that right here, there'd be some hanging down, right behind them, they'd be hanging down. Imagine if I had some salami or summer sausage like that big, some hard salami hanging. I could get quite a few in here that way. And that could be on every one of these. Let me uh, just spread a couple out and give you a better look. So right now, if I had four hooks on each of these seven bars, that's what it would look like. Let's give you a look from this way, see that? Yeah, that is pretty awesome. And these I just bought probably off Amazon or something. I just ordered them online. I may have to get some more, some different lengths or sizes or something like that. But, you know, even if I had a couple things pulling pretty hard on here, that doesn't move that rebar very much at all. So I'm thinking just hanging meat stuff on here. We're going to be pretty good. And I also may do something else in case I got serious big stuff. I may run a center beam that's down a little bit that I have a chain I can put over and then I'd hook the chain over to the center of here, run it up there and chain it up and just have that center beam hold these still in case I got some really heavy stuff. Not sure if I'm gonna need to do that, but I at least got it in my mind ahead of time in case I have to. All right, let's get the next next level up.
So that's the stagger set, and uh, I'm gonna show you how I make these level in there and show you something with the spacing. And again, the spacing I'm just guessing on, um, but I'm trying to do something that makes sense. And I want to have distinguishable different heights because depending on heat and smoke and things, you may want something at a different height. So I'm trying to have a differentiation between the levels as well, but yet um, close enough that we'll be able to kind of pack some stuff in there if we ever really need to. I mean, if I really crank out some pounds of like hard salami, I'm gonna wanna take care of it in one smoking. Um, if I go have an incredible harvest of some sort of fish that I'm gonna smoke or culling the meat chickens or other things, I'm gonna wanna be able to be effective at it. And spending a week out here running a couple birds at a time doesn't doesn't make sense for me. You know, I wanna be able to do a massive amount um, at one time if I need to, because the heat's gonna be there, the smoke's gonna be there, so get the most bang for your buck, the biggest return on your investment. So inside here, I've got this board, it's gonna get flipped up that way, this one's gonna get flipped up that way. Ahead of time, I verified that all these match. Um, if I had this re reversed 180, there'd be a difference in them but this way they all match. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down my space between this one and the next. I'm gonna screw in one screw, and then I'm gonna make it level across. Once I make it level across, I'm gonna kinda get this one into position and make it level across this way by using an extra board, that guy there, and a level to make sure it's level this way, and then I'm gonna level it out that way, and then we should be level this way, this way and this way, if that makes sense. I'll show you as I go here. Here I've got one screw in and it's leaning across, but I got a level. So I'm just gonna bring that up to where it actually is level, about there, and then screw it in over there. And have this distance where it's about nine inches from that layer to that layer. Now that I got this one in level, I'm going to put one up here about where I think it should be, hold it in place, balance the board across here to make sure that's level, and then screw it in. And after that, make sure this one's level while this one stays level, and screw in that end. With the help of my lovely wife, I made this one across level, and then at the same time, made sure that one was level. Um, and when I pull this out, I'll drop in some rebar and just take a peek at it. I just got a couple more screws to put in. And the cool thing about this too is, you know, this is just untreated wood from the sawmill. Um, we get this at a huge discount compared to what you'd pay at a retail store. This is the 3B Oak Lumber from a local sawmill and we absolutely love it. Cool thing too with it being untreated is then if I save the sawdust, I can smoke my meat with that. I wouldn't want to use treated wood or something else with chemicals in it to smoke meat. Then I'd eat those chemicals. Wouldn't be good for me. Here's an example of that stagger then. Let's see. Come in here, you can see they're staggered pretty well. If I hook those things on, they're staggered pretty well too. That'll give me an opportunity, like I said, not only to have a certain number of heights, but also um, to be able to really pack some things in here. As long as smoke can get around them, um, whatever I have hanging, it should work out just fine. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do one, two, three more. Um, I've got the other one of those already, the next set made up, and then I'll do another set of those with the stagger, and then a set of the original, and that should bring me down low enough where I don't need any other options. And I'll see how many rebar I make for this project, how many I save for some concrete pours. I kept one out as a pattern to make two like it and two of the staggers. I think this is the stagger here. There's two more like it. That's a set. So I've got five of these in, two over there, three over here, and now it's time to put five more in and that'll complete this part of it. Um, then I'm just gonna see how many rebars I make. It is so hard to do all the work up front before before getting a return on my investment. Um, they used to work various jobs where you work an hourly wage, get a paycheck every two weeks or week, stuff like that. And sometimes I work jobs where I don't get paid till the job is done. That's how I'm running this one. I don't get paid till the job is done. Until this is done, 
I'm not eating out of it. So I gotta finish this up. And it feels good though to be knocking this out. See what it looks like here in a minute. That was crazy. Um, I got it done. Technically, I just spent $80 in rebar for the racking here. That's gonna be one of the most substantial investments in this project is going to be that rebar for the racking. But I think it's gonna do what I need. I'm gonna have to monitor it because things become more malleable as they become hot. So I gotta make sure if it doesn't work for here, I can upgrade to 5 8 or something bigger, maybe 3 quarter instead of half inch. And I've got other places to use the half inch for sure. So. Let's see what we got. Oh, also, <laughs> I hung these little hooks on these things, and as I was doing it, um, I dropped a couple, but they always landed on stuff. It was like a barrel of monkeys. They just kept grabbing. It was pretty cool. So here we go, and what this does is this allows every layer to pretty much have all the rebar they need. I have one open space, and the reason I left that open space is I didn't want to cut a 20-foot stick of rebar right now for that. Um, I think I got some stuff coming up that may give me a piece like that. So I'm not just going to shorten a stick to 15 feet if I don't have to. You can see though from the top all the way down, this would be a crazy type thing. Um, also here, this runs with the stuff at the edge. So there's an extra board right here on each side. So they needed to be about two inches shorter. Um, and then this one here has a batten on the inside. So I need to be one inch shorter. So this one specifically, and this entire level is specific for that area. So if I've got to take some of these out, I just pick them up and roll them back is, is going to be the way to do it. And I'll just kind of, you know, oops, well that fell in the pit, but I can just shove them all the way to the back and open this whole area up if I want. Um, well, it's just kind of cool. And they can all just stay on their level. They can store them in the back of it. They'll be completely out of the way. But that is crazy. So that's a wrap on that, guys. The racking is in effect. Um, any of my grates, any of my grills, any of my stuff from old barbecue things, I can set on any of those layers. Um, I've got that one up in there right now. There's another one over there on my rock smoker right over in there. So we're, we're cool. We did it. Uh, Monster Truck, Sir? thanks for your help. You're welcome. And uh, you guys will have to see what we got coming next. A couple other things before I can fire this up and then we're gonna have a grand opening and we got something amazing planned for that. Are you excited? Yes, sir. Me too, me too. All right, we'll see you later. Papa out. Monster Truck out.
cow head is good? Yeah. That's because you know. 